My name is Wayne Dixon from CG Cookie, obviously, but today we are going to be animating a run cycle. Yes, you can see Melvin here is running in a uh, fast, uh, cartoony style uh, run at 30 frames per second. This is what we're going to be animating today. Now I've recorded this in real time. That means that the, the whole thing is recorded. It's about 90 minutes long where I explain everything as I go. I'm talking to the camera while, while I'm doing it, but nothing is sped up. Now because of this, you might be thinking 90 minutes, that's a really long time, but it's actually, it doesn't take you 90, it wouldn't normally take me 90 minutes to animate this run, run cycle, but it takes me 90 minutes to animate the run cycle while explaining what I'm doing and showing you all the mistakes because I'm meant to do the mistakes. Now, in regards to the run cycle here, let me just jump over here. These are the poses that we're going to work on first. So I want to just kind of explain what we're going to be doing before we jump into uh, Blender to actually do it. So as I said, there's many different types of run cycle. We're going for a fast cartoonish type run. So that usually means um, about uh, six frames per set step, but that is kind of at the 24 frame per second um, uh, length or speed, but we're working at 30 frames per second. So that's going to be a little bit more frames. So here's a little bit of a breakdown. This is the most important, well, not the most important, but this is the frame that we're going to start from first. And it's the almost contact. See, I've con I'm going to call it the contact frame is for simplicity because um, you can plan it from anywhere. The, the actual contact frame is gonna be frame two, but it's easier to plan it and, um, and start out on, on this frame in my experience. And that is because uh, when the foot is, when, when you're making a run or when you're doing a run, the foot is already moving backwards as um, it makes contact. So it's easiest to actually get it or pose it in this um, extreme position before you actually move move backwards. Okay, uh, then next we're gonna do the opposite side of that, which is frame eight, which is the other almost contact. I'm just gonna call it the contact. And then obviously this one over here is the exactly the same frame because this is where it's gonna loop on frame 15. So that means if we shorten down our cycle inside Blender to, four, to frame 14, then it's gonna be a smooth loop as it um, as it loops over and over. So they're the, the three poses that we're gonna focus on first. And then the next one is gonna be this passing position, which is sometimes called the down. It depends on, um, you know, it, it's the down and the passing position at the same time. Uh, and then we're gonna do the mirrored side and uh, then work on the up position where he's in the air. So that's the order that we're going to do it. You can obviously see that there's, um, uh, I'm gonna include this little um, thing for you to, to download in the in the source files, but you can see where the weight is coming on to. So as he's going on the passing position, the weight is kind of transferred across this side. And he's also got a little bit of tilt. So he's tilting towards that. And that is mirrored on the other side over here. So you can see he's kind of uh, mirrored like that. I drew that exaggerated, obviously. Now you can treat this mini course as a standalone um, animation course, but you're gonna get more out of it if you've already taken the animation bootcamp. And that's because I'm not gonna uh, explain any of the principles and the terminology type things as we go. That's all explained in the animation bootcamp. But if you have also done the body mechanics course, you can even, you're gonna get even more out of uh, this course. But as I, having said that, you can actually just undertake it, but you'll, you'll get more out of it if you've already taken those, those courses. And one more note on the forward movement of this character. Now it doesn't look like it, but this character is actually moving forward. Uh, and the way we're doing that is actually on the root control. We're not actually animating the the, uh, the main controls moving forward or anything. We're just doing that in the last step, moving the character forward. Now, the reason I did that is for a couple of reasons, but it makes it a little bit easier so that the character's staying in place while you're animating it. Plus, you can uh, then just mute the root control if you want him to stay in place or unmute it and make him move forward. So there's, there's some options there. Now, if you're trying to follow along step by step for this, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I would kind of recommend doing it in chunks. So watch watch a chunk and, and kind of zoom back and, and look at the steps that I'm doing rather than trying to to do it as, as you're following along with the with the tutorial because that's going to make it a lot harder. But just work in chunks. Uh, how big a chunk that is, that's up to you. But if you've already done the animation bootcamp as well as the body mechanics and workflow courses, you already know what those good chunks are. All right, enough talk. Pop the kettle on and let's get animating. <laughs> 